Good morning, Kamal. Good morning, Ivan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi. Welcome. Morning. All right. So, good morning, morning. Welcome, everybody. Wisdom's Chats, uh, UK edition. Uh, so, uh, we were just uh, briefly chatting about worth. Well, we weren't just chatting about worth and value. We we're about to chat about worth and value, but. Uh, the question that we were, we were discussing was uh, our local here in South Africa power utility who is worthless uh, because they keep on cutting us off. But uh, I believe that's uh, not, it's not a unique challenge in the world at the moment. I think there are a few other places around that are experiencing similar, similar challenges, but worth and value. So that's, uh, that's really the topic this morning. So Lee, I'm going to hand it over to you to kick us off and uh, see if we can sound, find something with value worth chatting about. <laughs> Me! <laughs> I'm the value! <laughs> uh, yeah, so Kamal, welcome. Um, and just to catch you up, so our last, our discussion from last week was about money. And it, it raised for me the question, and I, because I, I experienced it in my own life, is I felt a lot better about myself when I was earning money than when I wasn't. And I, and then it was also the flip side that when I felt better about myself, when I, get, when I felt uh, a greater sense of my value and what I was offering and I had greater confidence in that, I could ask for more money. <laughs> so, so those two things seem to, to work sort of in tandem with each other. And, and so was really questioning, is self-worth an inside job? Or is it something that we need acknowledgement in the, or from the outside? And again, I just feel like it's both. Uh, and I, I've experienced a lot um, or, or seen a lot of, of this need or the, the power of acknowledgement when somebody does something well, or you, you, it's just P, uh, Tom Peters actually says, there is nothing more powerful than a handwritten note with the words, well done. And it's such a simple thing. And yet it has this incredible impact. Uh, you know, this uh, chicken soup for the soul had all these, you know, life-inspiring stories and so on. And one of the stories was a, a manager giving his team basically stars, you know, on a chart. <laughs> and it was, and he said he couldn't believe how they would like fight to get these stars. And I think it's, I think the bottom line is, we need to be seen. And I think, you know, Jasper Kluter this morning in our Wisdoms chat spoke about a little boy uh, who, whose dad, well, his dad said to him, um, your mom doesn't do anything. And uh, this little boy drew pictures of his mom doing the various activities that she did during the day from cooking to weaving to cleaning to going to the shops and, and it was these multiple things. And then he posted it and it's gone viral in India. And, and it's just, to, it's being seen. It's, it's saying, oh, I, I'm, I'm recognizing what you do. Uh, and so those, those are my thoughts around self-worth and value. Love to hear yours. Great, okay, thanks, thanks, Lee. Yeah, so well done, Lee. Yeah, I really appreciate Oh, for that, so <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right, good. So Frank, let's get across to you, to you next and hear your thoughts on this. I struggled with this, I, I what Lee just said there helped me a wee up our notes there. I literally have just scribbled some words and notes here. 
that I'm going to put out there because I, I don't know what self-worth is. Uh, you know, I have a lot of self-worth. I'm confident and, and the likes uh, and uh, need approval from other people, I don't think. Although it's nice to have, and I suppose subconsciously it does boost. But the, the words that I've written down or the little phrases I've written down is, and that's got a lot to do with it. If you're confident, then you're going to feel uh, within yourself. Um, I, I was thinking last night that it's uh, it's like having a place in the world. And then it's almost, you know, the difference between self-worth and or is a bit like seeing yourself in 3D instead of 2D. You know, it's a much clearer picture. It's a much, uh, it's much more about where you fit in world and if you feel that you fit in in life in the world then you feel worthy you feel about so how we fit in that was the next thing that i had said and then to what lee was saying there is it about achievement but it's it's not so much about achievement as uh, I, I think so you know being acknowledged for what you do or where you it's not even about this is where i struggle it's not even about what you do, it's about who you are. Uh, the, the child in India kind of drawing who her mother draw what she does. So it's confusing. You know, it's it's about what we are, but it's about that was about being her mother, not about the chores that she did. Confusing for me, uh, anyway. And then I've jotted down as well um, what I think of me versus what other things others think of me. So my self-worth comes of what I think of me. Um, you know, not I don't really depend on what others think of me. Although, as I said earlier on, that's important. It's good. It's great to get somebody to say well done or, or whatever um, to you. Now let's just see if I can read my own writing in this last one. Um, uh, so, so I, I'm, I just wrote, written down here that I don't really care what others think of me, uh, but I do care in some respects. If I thought that you all said, you know, if, if you were thinking just now, if I kind of a load of rubbish, uh, or if you even said it out loud, that would diminish. I don't really care what other people think because this is what I think. This is what counts for me. I think I've just confused the conversation more than I've, I've about that. But I struggled with this. I honestly struggled with this, and that's his comment or help me or. But but I must stress, I have great self. I hope I think I've achieved a lot in my life. I think I'm good to other people. I think I'm a nice person. Uh, so I don't struggle with self worth, but I struggle with the concept of self self worth. All right. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Frank. Yeah, no, look, I, I, I think you you pr you probably summed it up the way most people, uh, you know, struggle with this concept because, I, unfortunately, a lot of people look for external validation, don't they? Um, and certainly, from my perspective, uh, is is an indication of results and and the value that they truly they truly do offer or can offer. Um, and, and, you know, perhaps it's an element of maturity doesn't necessarily mean age. Um, I think it just means, it means understanding of, of really where you are. You spoke about um, and I think, uh, you know, once people have, have, do have something to contribute, they do have value to add, they do have worth in the world, you know, it, it becomes more of an internal exercise rather than an external validation of others and, and um, you know I think that's that that's unfortunately a, an exercise in futility um, because there's always going to be someone someone else who's going to try and pick you up but you're always playing the seesaw of uh, of to balance those those elements of validation so Ed let's get across to you and uh, and then we'll get to and hear her thoughts yeah it's interesting, isn't it? I think it's much easier to think about other people's worth, other people's value than your own value. Um, and I think when I was younger, 
I needed that external validation. So my salary was important. My title was important. Um, if I sat on any wonderful committees, you know, if I was a chairman of something, that was important. I, I'm quite happy with, with where I am, what I'm worth, how I'm valued, but I still occasionally like that little bit of external validation because a couple of days ago, I wrote a um, writers procrastinate all the time. We, we procrastinate more than we write. Into LinkedIn, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Um, and I said, oh, I really love this. And I quickly looked her profile up and she was a writer. And to me, that was just magic that another writer thought what I'd written, that she loved it. Um, and then I thought about, um, which was on my business blog. And there I put on equality, diversity, and inclusion. And it worked out at two pence. That's probably about 10 Rand. Because I was just talking about it, and she kept banging on about ED and I. And I'm sitting thinking, well, what's ED and I? And of course, it's it's the acronym. Sorry, di equality, diversity, and inclusion. And take away the value from something, the power of something. And it actually takes one second longer to say. Equality does to say E, D, and I. So we value on, on, on minimum wage in the UK is two pence. So less than a rand. Probably. And then I thought about what happened to me when I was in severe pain. I called up our, our non-emergency helpline for the, for, the, for the health service. A person there talked me through the option and said, look, I think you need to get to hospital. I'm calling you an ambulance. There was a driver and, and a, a paramedic. The paramedic electronic bits on me, shoved some painkiller up my arm. God. Um, and then he assessed I really did need to go to hospital, stuck the blue lights on and off we went. And then, so that's three people involved so far. Then I got to the hospital and there was a triage nurse. Realized I wasn't going to die. Checked to make sure the, the, the pain was working. And then sort of put me in the queue to get seen by the doctor. Of those people are paid, well, that salary. That's how much we value them. That's how much they're worth <coughs> in terms of money. Um, there's a guy who, who's a his bank who has a basic salary of 1.2 million pounds. And I think last year he got paid a total of 5.9 million if you add in his bonuses. I didn't phone him up because he's totally worthless when I'm in pain. I think it's it's an interesting thing, isn't it? I think value and worth is what we put on ourselves. And every single individual, in my opinion, has a tremendous value inside them. Huge amount to contribute. And if we do things to labels, then we remove all that value, all that worth, saying the true things about them. So those are my thoughts. I hope they help. Great, thanks, Ed. Yeah, look, I think you put put things into some nice perspective there. Just just in as a, as a techie, uh, EDI actually means electronic data interchange. <laughs> yeah, you know, so take take your pick. You know, <laughs> there are forty six uh, different acronyms. With EDI has got forty six different meanings. So, so, so value is about this much. So. <laughs> Yeah, so very interesting. Right, Kumal, welcome. Where, where are you connecting to us from this morning? And uh, glad to join us. 
thank you, Ivan. Thank you, everyone. So I told all your thoughts are, are like uh, matching with my thoughts. Uh, uh, being an entrepreneur, uh, we should think uh, uh, what we are thinking and uh, what we are thinking in terms of our capability of the others because we are working for that uh, uh, like needies we are working uh eventually we are providing the services to them so uh, we should think about the uh, feedback uh, of the services what we are giving them so that uh, they can and uh, increase uh, like our branding as well and we should think uh, what we are so and uh, even my me and myself i just think uh, who am i how i'm uh, thinking how i'm thinking out of the box and what i can do for that uh, public and uh, in our uh, company we try to build something innovative even my team uh, even i am motivate them to uh, think something out of box because that will again eventually uh, add some uh, and we'll get uh, some good feedback, some, uh, like high revenue. So that uh, that is my thought. So, uh, so that's what we are. From the technology background, we have to think technically, and because AML, uh, IoT, so we should think in perspective of that, so that we can get the good feed, increase our growth. Great, right, thanks, Kwan, and, and and yeah, thanks for thanks for bringing. Get around to to some some tangible business uh, applications of, of value and worth. You know, it's a, it is it is interesting to me because uh, on the other day and and uh, a comment that a friend made to me once actually came to mind, and, and that is the customer that doesn't complain is ruining your business. So, so yeah. think about that. So if you uh, you know if you don't if, if you know people are only giving you platitude and favorable comments, you don't know how to improve. So. Yes. But again, so, it, it uh, comes so down. In, a, yeah, in every area of feed, so we should ask uh, again for the positive and the like negative feed experiences give you the good, good experiences and to grow you and your team as well. So we should ask the bad things so that we can for everyone and eventually we'll become the good. Uh, absolutely. And, and I mean, for me, that comes down to, to, to a very interesting point because if validation and we're asking for negative feedback it means we, we place value on that negative feedback which uh, which i think is can, can be very powerful and uh, uh, i think you know often in a personal environment people see negative feedback as as yeah. criticism putting you down but if you can make that switch and say actually you know but it doesn't mean you have to react to it and yeah. as frank said earlier you know people criticize you or, or uh, or mm. put, try and put you down most of the is battered off and, and, and ignore it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah. perhaps there are times where, where it has genuine value and actually make use of it to, to look yeah, to so improve yeah. and, uh, uh, and, and learn. Uh, so yeah, I, think, I, can, uh, uh, I can map it with something uh, which we have recently done. Uh, everyone is aware about a uh, lot of project management tools in the market, but uh, we have also created the project most of the people will say why because there are a lot of project management is why you are creating because our vision is something different we are uh, our vision is something future like artificial intelligence so we face management uh, like handling the project uh, keeping uh, our team growing uh, keeping the customer happy successful delivery of the projects these are all the challenges we are facing even money on the tools but why we because uh, the thing also uh, to get the feedback we are giving free of cost because just negative feedback positive feedback anything because we want to add the value in our product and eventually if our product is good and if we are getting the negative feedback that will add again the value of new features in our product and after what we have invested so that's what we have thinking uh, even uh, like investing from our own money we are doing things uh, free of cost just to get the feedback. So that's uh, what is the entrepreneur thinking is. That's what I think. No, that's excellent. Thanks. Thanks very much for that. So, right, Lee, uh, let's get back over to you to, I think, wrap, wrap, wrap things up and uh, what we're going to chat about next week.
Yeah, so I just want to add a few more comments and then Frank's got the subject for next week. So um, I just I appreciate what Kamal's saying about feedback and that uh, but one of the things that I realize is that in order for us to receive that negative feedback or the feedback that it doesn't it, it is is more critical or more um, pointing out our weaknesses or the things that we are not doing well or our failures, we actually have to have a reasonable sense of self worth uh, to be able to take that on the chin. Um, and, you know, Edward spoke about writing, and I've, I've mentioned this before, that I wrote a book with two other women. And in order for us, for the, that book to really be cohesive, we really had to be tough on each other and to say, that doesn't make sense. You're not, it's overwritten. Um, I, I don't know what you mean. And, and you had to have a tough, a, a thick skin. Um, and and not and and so your sense of well-being had to be greater than the, the the critique that you were getting, and you had to put, as Ivan said, that critique in perspective, to say this is actually helping me. It's helping me get better and improve, and that is actually also going to build my self-esteem and confidence. Um, so, so that's the one thing that I wanted to say. And the other thing I wanted to say is, is I often, often hear people in, when they talk about some success that they've gained, they will ref, refer to a person who believed in them. And then they will often follow it by saying, when I didn't even believe in myself. And I think there is something very powerful that we can give to other people that when they have a sense of I can't do it or it's beyond me or uh, it's not possible or I can't see the end of this, that there's somebody who sees our potential, who, 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 who trusts a deeper part of us and pulls us through that and says, you can do it, it is possible, I believe in you. And that belief, we then borrow. And it becomes something that we, we, we don't own immediately, but we live into it because of what others have given to us. So uh, that- So I Thanks, totally yeah. agree. Well, yeah. Mm. yeah, I totally agree. Uh, agree. Very less people, who believe in potential in your potential for someone who is who has already done who are billionaire and who is a lot of things like uh, elon musk they're saying elon musk is doing a lot of things yeah he's doing he's very passionate person he's very intelligent person but that how he achieved that status he was failed and he was risky level but again he achieved people are talking about those persons with you but you are at that level you are growing you should believe that skill set and capabilities and how uh, dedicately that person so they're very uh, again very less people used to believe in your skills and you should not be feel demotivated if you're not feeling uh, uh, good about you but you should feel yeah this is a per person who is feeling bad make that person to feel good about you by doing something innovative so that's what uh, is my thing. Thanks, Kamal. Well, Frank, you wanted to, to add something on there? Yeah, just just into what uh, what you're saying there. I think we have a responsibility to build people up and make them self confident, or, or help make them self confident. And it just reminded me very quickly. I was certainly still in my primary school, which is before you go to the secondary school in the UK, which is the big school. So I was about 10 or 11 and uh, my parents went to a parents evening and my teacher uh, said, Frank is a, a really nice guy, never misbehaves in class. Uh, he's not the cleverest in the, in the world. Saying this to my parents, I wasn't there. My parents came back uh, and uh, said to me, you know, your teacher says you're doing well, you're doing well. but, you know, maybe we should concentrate on you looking 
the 10 year old boy looking at a career that isn't very academic you know it was a but they said a very important thing at the end it's too often i just remember that as we were talking and that is they said oh, you no know, and that that little validation from my parents saying well this is what he thinks of you but we believe in you we really think you could do better now i went on to be a qualified optician and business person so i think that built me up uh, it might have pulled some people down but i think in my instance my parents validating that i in the world uh, helped me throughout my life i think so not an awful lot but just thinking about the responsibilities the people are really important but they're right. <laughs> yeah and, and i think i think it, you know what you say is, is an incredibly important thing because uh there's a, another little thing that I, that I love to say and that is expect what you inspect and inspect what you and we 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 expect the worst and and therefore we're getting it you know, and and you could have taken that particular comment on on the negative side, and it on the on the positive side. But that little caveat at the end was, you know, and that that's you know that's in, inspecting what we expect almost in a way. So look for the good, uh, and and you'll probably think at the end of the day. So yeah. Well, I, I had a, just from a uh, video sent to me through the week that really got me thinking. If I can share my screen, it literally takes like 30 seconds, I think. Uh, I hear the, the hear it as well as, uh, as seeing it. Uh, but let me just see if I can remember how to share my screen. Uh, and I apologize for the title of this little video, but uh, the video itself is very good. So I'm going to share it just. Runaway train is heading for. Can you just tell me? Can you hear this? Can, can you, could you hear that video? We can't see it. We're just seeing your email. So I think you've shared the, the oh. wrong. The runaway train is heading for its Okay, let me just see if I can. So I'm really sorry about this, folks. I'm not. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, To me, and now, now my self worth has gone way down. <laughs> uh, let's see. I don't have a choice to share the, the video. That's strange. Just whiteboard. Yeah, if you, uh, Just you remember, thank that the 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 first email was sent within your lifetime. Was yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, right, I'm going to try. If you can see this, but I don't think you will be able to. If not, you can just listen to it. I'll maybe even send you the video if that's if that's okay. Mm. Um, but this might work. This might work. Can you see? Can you still just see? The whiteboard. Right, that's, not, whiteboard. that's not going to work either. Okay, I'm going to just go. So just listen to it, and I'll send it on to you as well if I can. Runaway train is heading. Workers on a railway line. There's no way of warning, but you're standing near a lever that operates some points. And the train goes down a spur. Lives. Another way of running. Switch the points. Sacrifice one to save five, since that produces the best outcome possible. Now imagine the train heading for the workers again. You have a very large man off a bridge, but he most people say no. But why not? One to say five. What the chronic problem examines is whether moral decisions are simply about her. Achievement. Some argue that the two cases are not importantly different from each other. Both have similar consequences. The points wouldn't push the man off the bridge, but they simply. Okay, I, I hope you understood that. When you see the video, send the, how, how's the best way to send the video to the five of us? Is it, can I do it in chat or? 
Have you got a link to it? If you've got a link to it, you can just pop it in the chat. Yeah. It's only in an email, so no, I don't. Oh, have... okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, me, Frank. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, good, good. Okay, I don't know if I've got your email address, Ivan, but I'll find you on LinkedIn. But, but if you the wisdom's email, we'll get it. Ah, cool, cool. Okay, I'll. You know, the visual uh, makes it much clearer than what it was trying to say. It was all about. So I'll send it off yeah. to you. We, we, we kind of did discuss this a little while back, didn't we? The, the, the interesting point there was about important or the outcome was important. Yeah. It got me. So, if it's something could you summarize the question? So, what, what, what yeah, you would want what, to ask? Yeah. Basically, what. Uh, towards five workers on the railway line and uh, either uh, switch the, the, a lever, and that's the important part, switch, and it'll only kill one of them because it goes down a spur, or you can push somebody in front of the train and you and that would have the same thing because that would just kill one person instead of five. And most people, the person in front of the train, that was a physical action of put of killing most would pull the lever. So is it the process of just killing one person or uh, it, so is it the process that's important or is it the outcome that's important? Okay. So we're gonna we take that up as the topic. So process or outcome. Uh, good, all right, super, fantastic. Thanks everyone. Join us a bit later if you if you like uh, at uh, two p.m. GMT time. Maybe in the states uh, or every every morning eight a.m. GMT. I get it wrong. It is. Hey, is it one o'clock our time? No, no, I said GMT. I didn't say you. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, uh, yeah. I misheard and thought you meant to drink G GMT. GMT. Uh, that could, I think I could probably do with one of those by now. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, 2 p.m. GMT. Uh